Hey guys, I've been working on this old car for half a year now, but the time has finally come for me to assume the position. That's right, it's time to get started on the wiring. So actually laying across this, uh, laying across the bench like this isn't too bad. This is actually a very comfortable way to do the wiring. Usually I have to stick my feet up in the air. Okay, what I wanted to show you is I have the Resolve EV wiring harness that's made for the Resolve EV controller. I also have a homemade version, but this one is a thousand times better, a lot more professional, better connectors that are 10, 15 years old and are broken. Um, and there's no like splicing happening. It's just going, the wire is going from the connector to the connector. Basically it makes the job plug and play. So I'm just plugging and playing. So let's do some plugging and playing. Anyways, I started in the back here because this is where my motor is, the motor inverter and the charger are right there. So you had, you had that guy there. You have this guy here that's behind this plastic cover. You have the charge ports over there. That was really easy. Unfortunately for me though, one little hiccup is this doesn't reach the motor. This needs to reach the motor, the encoder on the motor, which is down there. So I'll have to, I'll have to extend this guy. No problem though. So here's my wires. They go up around here, up over the CV axles, between the motor and the shock absorber and then into zip tied onto this strip of metal that I'm using as a conduit and the high voltage wires will go inside this conduit. I'm getting the wiring harness installed and the cool thing though with this Resolve wiring harness is it came with all these extenders. It came with two two meters extenders and two one meter extenders and therefore you can uh, adapt it to exactly what you need. So for me I'll need three meters of extension for the PDM and three meters of extension for the inverter. And then I'm opting to wrap them in electrical tape just to help keep them a little bit more watertight. At first I wasn't sure they would be long enough and they are, so I'm very happy about that. And you also got the wires here for the Chatamo port and for the AC charging port, the level one port. <laughs> of aluminum here. This is the Resolve EV controller with the wiring harness for also from Resolve. And with that wiring harness, they give you this little fuse box here. Let me get it open. Some micro fuses and a micro relay. And because it's all just plug and play, I don't have to worry about it. And I assume this relay is for the inverter. Now, in addition to that, I picked up my own relay and fuse box here. And actually this is really, this is a really nice piece of kit here. I'll put the link in the description for this. Now let me get the, let me get it open. So this will be for headlights, windshield wiper motor, rear window motor. Now I gotta get all of these things to fit though on this piece of aluminum that I got. All right, here's everything put together on the board here. And I also managed to fit the OBD2 port. Now all of this can go in the glove box. Okay, that's pretty cool. And here's where I'll be spending the rest of my days. Okay, well I'll get started with the easy ones first. I have the inverter and the PDM and the wires are already run to the back. 
Here we go. Here's one. And here's the other one. Is it bad? All right, the rest of them won't be that easy. <laughs> um, I'm going to go ahead and finish this. I'm about halfway finished right now with just the essentials needed to get the wheels spinning. I want to get the wheels spinning by the end of the week, definitely by the end of this video. I quickly made this uh, little switch panel here. This is the LCD screen for the Resolve controller, and it'll show what mode you're in, forward, neutral, forward, neutral, reverse. So these switches are forward, neutral, reverse. It'll show you your charge percentage, any error codes, etc., etc. And this is just temporary. I think I'm gonna get one made from Send Cut Send. It's just temporary to get me going. So it'll look something like this. And behind it though, I mounted the throttle pedal and I just got some angle iron here. This is actually from a bed frame, an Ikea bed frame. Just some scrap metal. And the nice thing, the cool thing was I could uh, slide this up and down to get it to the right spot that I wanted. And then get it fastened, paint it flat black so no one could ever see it. Bada bing, bada boom, ready to go. Okay, this is not long enough to reach to where I want to locate the battery. So I need to cut this in half. Hi, Feature Danny here. Just popping in to say this is the point where I screwed up. Screwed up big time. I'm in the middle of editing this video. It's a little bit hard for me to watch. So I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna say it now and tell you what happened. I cut the cable, expecting there to be a red one and a black one, like there usually is with battery cables. Nope, they were both orange. Instead of opening up the inverter and opening up the battery pack to look for the continuity and figure out which is the positive and which is the minus wires, I just kind of guessed based on the plastic shielding around it. You know, there was a seam and I, was, I just kind of lined them up based on that seam and it turns out it was wrong. I shouldn't have took a chance at all. I should have checked the continuity and figured out which is the positive, which is the minus. And to do that, I would have had to have opened up the inverter to the bus bars and open up the battery pack. But I was in a hurry. I wanted to get the wheel spinning and I wanted to get this car ready in time for a parade. And I made a mistake. So as, as painful as it is, keep watching guys, but there's gonna be a lot of good news at the end of this video. So stay tuned. Here's what we're working with. I had to identify them with some colored tape here because, you know, both positive and negative wires, as you can see, are both orange. Um, just FYI, this is zero gauge copper wire. Now I can extend them. I'll use these lugs here. And over here, here is the cable I'm using. Okay, so I'm gonna use these couplers here. And I actually showed my method for doing all this sort of work in a previous video. I'll link to that on the screen now and in the description. Flash forward to it being done in three, two, one. Hey, there you go, that is that. I'll put a link to this in the description if anyone's interested in picking that up. That's what I used for the crimps. The other end is down there. And those pieces can connect to the battery and we can get the wheels spinning.
you this. turning on that should be on the ignition is on but the cool thing about all this is it includes the ability to have a obd2 port i have that installed you need to have the leaf spy pro app this is 25 bucks but check this check out what i can do so it's connecting here it's showing a pretty much you know, it's all zeroed out. So, not getting any information from the battery or something's wrong. But here's the cool thing. I can check the, uh, I can check the DTC codes. So let's go to the settings first. And here is what it took me a good 24 hours to realize. To get this to work on the Resolve, you have to go to the model year and for me, it was selected at 2013 at first. Go up to BMS motor inverter, choose that. And then go down here to service screen, click enable. And now you can get to the DTC codes. Click the read DTC button there and it'll start getting some codes. Let's see how many I got. Okay, six, that's not so bad. Um, Looks like, you know, high voltage battery, can air. That's normal, probably. Charger, charger, charger. I'm kind of worried that something's wrong with my DC to DC converter inside the charger. So uh, I'm going to look up what these codes mean a little further. And maybe I'll get this working. Maybe I'll get this fixed. Here's what I've done. I kept it connected to the resolve harness, but unplugged, it, uh, unplugged the high voltage wires there. And when I turn it on, the pre-charge relay circuit is, um, you know, that relay is then closed. So now I have voltage, you know, no current, but voltage at that terminal there. And I could measure it with a voltmeter there and I was getting 340 volts. So I know that the pre-charge resistor is still good. And then what I need to do next is open up the battery pack. After I verified that the pre-charge resistor inside the battery pack was not blown and with the battery pack opened up and the cover to the bus bars at the inverter removed, I could check continuity from the battery to the inverter and that is when I discovered my mistake. The high voltage positive was connected to the negative and vice versa, but plugging everything back in and turning it all on did not result in a working vehicle and now I had a new error code faulty inverter. I didn't give up yet though. I tried using my DIY wiring harness just to rule out any problem with the resolve harness, but that did not fix the issue and I was getting the same DTC error codes. So I moved it and reinstalled the resolve harness. I also tried swapping the two low voltage wires to the level one charge port. As I was told, if those get mixed around, that can cause the same issue as I'm seeing, but that did not help either. The last thing I tried was eliminating the battery pack connector as a source of the problem because they can break. 
so I cut it off and connected the battery wires directly to the bus bars inside the pack. So I'll show you just one out of many, many attempts to get this vehicle to turn on. One last attempt. God damn it. Okay, bummer. I'll get the DTC codes. Then I'll call it quits for this video, I think. Actually, one last thing. I said in the previous video that I was going to have this car ready in time for an art car parade, and I was going to dress it up as a Ghostbusters Ectomobile sort of car. That's obviously not happening. That parade is in two weeks, and I don't even have a battery pack put together yet for it, so maybe next year. I hate saying that. I hate saying that, but I guess it'll just have to be next year. Okay, with the end of this video on a somewhat positive note, there is one cool thing I can show you. I got the rear window motor working. That had that was a whole restoration job in itself. So stick around, I'll show you some footage from that. Thanks for watching guys, see ya.